Welcome back everyone, Dino Joe here. I went and dug out the old home light C7. We're gonna try and fire it up, put down the dyno. Let's see what happens. I made this tool. It's a one-way bearing, 3 8 drive, wobble on it. So it'll tighten. It'll tighten. But once the engine fires, it'll let it overrun. That way the nut won't loosen up. These old saws, they have a standard nut that holds it. This one was lucky enough to have a rim drive set up. So I'm going to fuel it up, see if it'll fire. This thing's been sitting for years, so I don't know. Cross your fingers. Ought to be enough to get it fired up. Rod a lot, choke, ignition. Let's see. I swapped some parts in the carb, new gaskets, diaphragm, see if that'll pull fuel now. Give it a little prime, see what it does. It pulled fuel. Nineteen pounds fourteen ounces for the home light C7. This is an early 60s model saw, right when they started going direct drive. They also had gear drives. This is probably a 63, 64. After this, they went to the two-digit C52, C72, C92. This is 80 cc's. That's what I had to do earlier. Big flat air filter. Tillotson HL carb. Flat reeds in these. The bigger XPs, they had kind of a pyramid style reed. This is your idle screw. You either adjust it with the L or you have to take the filter off and adjust the idle here. Choke knob. This is manual oil only. Give that a pump and it squirts oil out it has a stack style exhaust that's it that's how they came that's why it has such a nice tone to it you listen i picked this one because this was actually my third saw um, and lucky enough and i was lucky enough that it had a seven spline rim set up on it so i could switch to the three eighths here's the bar oil here's the fuel A lot of times when you get these, you'll have to split the tanks because they'll be all corroded inside. But here it is. This is the third saw I've ever owned. Home Light C7. Another neat thing about these is they had the chain adjuster in the side cover. So it was a little bit easier to get to than... Alright, here's that tool I was talking about. Socket goes on there, tight that way, and when the engine fires, it can spin this way. That way it doesn't loosen up the crank nut. Tight, engine will fire and overrun it. That's an overrunning bearing in there. Alright, we'll fire it up. Get it tuned and see what kind of power it puts out.
with that handy starting tool, these old saws aren't as bad anymore. You might have to get into some more of them. If you enjoy this content, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right, here's the results. Peak horsepower, 4.02, 5250. Peak torque, 4.45, 4,250 RPM. None of this stuff matters over here. That's just generic. Here's all the, all the readings at the different RPMs. Every 250 RPM. Here's the curve. This is why these older saws, they feel like they don't give up. Because by the time you're making power, you're still going to keep pulling until the clutch starts slipping. They make an awful lot of torque. Not a ton of RPM, not a ton of horsepower. This is pretty fun, guys. These old saws, they're pretty neat. Thanks for motivating me to get it going again. Saw sat for about four years at least. Neglected, sadly. Other than a little hiccup in my handy-dandy starting tool, it wasn't too bad.